We're populating a flow rate power chart today for a smelting furnace used for doing cast iron casting. Hey, what's up, fellas? Doing a video for Jeremy today. They've commissioned a modular combustion system for a cast iron smelter. And I've taken their previous equipment and just turned it into this little box here. Today, we're going to test out the pressure settings on a 2.5 gallon per hour, 80 degree B cone nozzle. The furnace will have a connection like this stuck onto the side of it. And this will mount just like that with a tri-clamp. So you would simply disconnect this one tri-clamp to remove it from the furnace. This would be welded onto the side at a tangent. Doesn't really need to be a tangent, actually, with the design you guys are using, Jeremy. And it's a lot harder to do a tangent versus a straight in. In your case, I don't think you need to bother making a tangent. and It would be less effective even because you'd be spraying oil on the side of your furnace wall which is okay once it's hot but so at any rate we're going to fire this thing up and take it through its paces it's got a different setup to it now all you, that you need to do to adjust the pressure is simply turn this knob because we're doing calibration work i have to use an actual ANSI approved gauge that's some high dollar kit right there and it's digital so we're getting precise measurements i don't trust the um, the standard store-bought $10 gauges for work this important. So I've removed it and attached this. And as you can see now, to get pressure. We're just turning a knob. Preheater is not on right now, so we're not getting optimal atomization. This module is still not hot to the touch, and it has to be before we get where we want to be. We're looking more like an actual spray pattern now, and we're still not fully heated up. But it is getting really warm to the touch. Interference. I wish I had a good clear zone. A good example. I'm going to shut it off. I'll we'll observe the effects of no preheat. And there it goes. See how it's starting to turn into threads versus a mist? You get these little jets you see waffling. See those? those fingers. You can see we get this very erratic, hard to use spray pattern. This would still work just fine in most furnaces, but we want performance. We need the highest heat possible. So here's the list that we populated. Took us a couple of hours, all said and done, but time to clean up. All right, this is what we did today. I don't have time for BTUs. We're burning the candle at both ends here. So in conclusion, we have a preheat that you don't want to run more than 200 watts. It doesn't need it. Got a little dot right there showing you what power level, which is about 1.6 amps. Of power on that preheat and as far as setting the pressure all you got to do is just turn this knob on and off 
of course you want to turn this on first but um, that's about the gist of it from what you guys have been doing I'm gonna recommend the four gallon per hour nozzle this is a 2.5 that's on here you can try it with this but I really don't think it's got the beef I think you're gonna want the four gallon per hour nozzle but um, I suppose we could see what this does first. It's a good start, 249 kilowatts ain't bad.